Out on the farthest edge, there in the sun, you were there.
Good morning. What a beautiful, glorious day it is, and what a blessing it is we get to be here uh, in church and, and worship and uh, <coughs> mixing it up a little bit. We're doing our uh, announcements first. Uh, I guess Troy wanted to get my part out of the way, so it can only get better from here. So um, wanted to uh, run through announcements. Thank you, Fred. Um, <coughs> There's a riverfront service. It's been rescheduled. The community is invited to a revival at the riverfront in Washington. Uh, we'll be hosting worship service with food and fellowship on April 18th from 6.30 to 8, 30, 8 p.m. at the Pavilion on the riverfront in Washington. Uh, the men's golf outing. Uh, all men are invited to play uh, golf, and for golf and fellowship. RSVP to Jim Dotson. Uh, <coughs> 636-239-3553, that's broadcast all over the world now, Jim, you're going to be getting calls. So, um, <clears throat> and it's at Wolf Hollow uh, on April 20th, 8 o'clock. Uh, there is a high school senior bonfire. Uh, please join us on Monday, April 29th, around the bonfire at, at church as we recognize the senior class of 2024 from our youth group. The youth, parents, families, coaches, teachers, and you are all invited to come for dinner beginning at 6 p.m. and the service beginning at 6.30 in which we will recognize the seniors in our youth group. <clears throat> Please bring a lawn chair and join us in our worship of God for these youth. Uh, that's on April 29th at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., uh, right in the pavilion out front. Um, and as usual, uh, any additional information, if you need to follow up on any of those things, go to firstwashmo.com. Uh, and uh, all of the details are there. So, um, <clears throat> All right, I'd like to open with a little prayer, if you'll pray with me. Most gracious Lord, we thank you. We come to you this morning with gratitude, maybe, a little, maybe some sorrow, maybe some doubt, fear, but mostly gratitude for all the blessings that you give us on a daily basis. We thank you for the ability to be here this morning. We thank you for the, the grace that you give us. We thank you for the words that you're going to provide to us today. Hope that we, we hear them, we pay attention, listen to the word, and that it improves our approach to life. Amen. Uh, and now, <clears throat> if you all will join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, if you'll stand, I'll turn it over to the band.
Well, thank you all for joining us this morning and for joining us in singing. That was really beautiful to hear you all. Um, if you would please greet someone around you and tell them something about your day plans today.
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship. Man, I am so thankful to be with you guys today, and I'm going to have you standing for just a couple more minutes because we're going to take up our offering. I'm going to ask our ushers to go ahead and collect today's offering. And how many of you get excited about giving back? All right, 10 of you. Great. So we're, we're going to work on this today. Uh, so when we give our offering, it is asked of God to give back. Give back to uh, his people. Give back so that he can see uh, an offering coming from us. And as the ushers come forward today, maybe you have uh, your financial offering that you would like to give. Or maybe you give online. This is a great opportunity to give back to the community and then watch what God does with it. Okay? I'm just going to, to talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, we started this program probably two years ago, and you saw in the announcements the senior bonfire. Uh, two years ago, we started with two people at Breadco, two high schoolers at Breadco, and we offered it out to the high school. Hey, we don't care what denomination you are. We don't care where you go to worship. What we care about is growing together on Monday nights. It went from two people to now 30 people meeting in our living room, okay? Yeah, so just to show you, just to show you what God has planned, it, it's awesome that we get to worship and, and walk through. We now have five adult leaders that have to take care of, no, I shouldn't say have to take care of, but look forward to Monday night. I, I even told our district superintendent a couple weeks ago, I said, you know what, I love preaching. I love giving the word of God to the people of God. And I love doing all of this, but I will tell you the part that is my heartbeat is Monday night. I start in working on that about noon. And we don't get finished until close to 9, 9.30 at night when the last student or adult leader wants to leave because they are so hyped up because of what they've just learned. And that is an offering back to God and you all have, have helped participate in that offering to God by providing food. Food is the key thing with high schoolers. I'm going to tell you right now, it is the, it is the number one thing that you have to have food, and they will come. All right? So if you're, if you're a high schooler, we're going to have a couple more weeks of, of visiting together, but your offering, church, your offering has helped guide this group to grow, okay? So, there, there's just one thing in which God has blessed the offering of you all. Those of you who are online as well, all right? So let's sing the doxology together while you're still standing, and then we're going to go into a message time, all right? So, let's sing the doxology together. Praise God Thank you for worshiping you in your house, for getting here at this point in time, for delivering the offering in which we're going to watch how you multiply this offering in so many ways that we cannot even fathom. And Lord, as we get ready to go into our teaching and learning time, may our eyes and ears and hearts be open to the words that you are about to give us. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. All right. So. You come out of Easter, and, and as we have uh, on Easter Sunday, there is a lot of Holy Spirit movement, right? And then you get the Sunday after Easter, and you look around, and you go, where did you all go? You know, where, where did everybody go? You're here. That's what I was getting ready to say. Thank goodness you all are here. Because what you're wanting to do today and what I am going to be talking about a lot today is how we are chosen people of God. Do you believe that? 
Do you believe that you were chosen to be here at this moment to receive the message, the fellowship, listen to the songs, sing the songs, participate in the worship of God? All right. There is more uh, energy right now than you can possibly shake a stick at. So I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be a phenomenal time to participate in worship with God. Because many times, I'm going to ask you, when was the last time you were chosen for anything? Maybe it was chosen for a job promotion. Maybe it was chosen to be on a team. Maybe it was chosen to uh, be the head of your HBA. And some of you go, I don't want that job. You were chosen to be treasurer. You don't want that either right now, right? All right. So you were chosen for this moment. You were chosen to be here in worship of God today for a reason. Now in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Peter is writing to the people after the resurrection. Because see, so many times we get lodged and caught in the resurrection that we don't move forward. And Peter is saying, hey, I was with Jesus. I even denied knowing Jesus. And Jesus still forgave me. I was chosen. I was told, you're going to be the rock in which I build this church. And I'm glad to be chosen. But get this, you are chosen as well. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Where have we received mercy? From the cross, right? and from the empty tomb that still is the empty tomb this Sunday, which could possibly be any of you all's Easter Sunday. Easter means a new beginning, a new hope. Easter means a new season of your life. If, like we talked about last week, if you take hold of that opportunity and say, I want to do this, now, we're going to get into a passage of Scripture here that this is going to be a simple message today. So simple, even I can understand it. All right? Over the course of the last two years, give you a little bit of uh, update on my personal life. Two years ago, I told Catherine on a Monday, I think I want to go back and get my bachelor's degree. Now, some of you are looking at me going, didn't you already have it? No, I'm on the 36-year plan, okay? I, I, I am, so for all of you out there going, I wish I could go back to school, or I really feel like I could go back to school, you may be 100 years old and going, I didn't get the bachelor's degree. I'm proof positive that you can earn it. And during that time, I told her, I said, I want to get a degree in something that I enjoy doing. Not that I don't enjoy preaching. Not that I don't enjoy the religious life and, and ch being chosen as a clergy person. I wanted to do something totally different. I love numbers. I love math. And so I went back and got a degree in nonprofit financial business. That'll play. And as I get ready to graduate a month from yesterday from Dakota Wesleyan University with a degree in that, one of the things that caught my attention in this whole pl plan and process was a thing called a strategic plan. I don't know why I get so hyped up on strategic plans. Many of you would look at it and go, I don't know what, even what you're talking about. I didn't either. And when I started the strategic planning, I went to our leadership team last year and I said, hey, here's a, here's a strategic plan and we have to work with this strategic plan and this church will grow because of this strategic plan. And they're like, Okay. How many of you have ever come to somebody with an idea and they look at you with the deer in the headlight look? 
All right? And, and they say, oh, well, we're going to trust you here. And what we saw in this church was growth because of God bringing to fruition what the strategic plan was, business-wise. Now, what if I told you that God had a strategic plan for our own personal lives? God's strategic plan for each and every one of us that have ears to hear this message today is this. It's simple. I created you. I want to have a relationship with you. And I want you to live eternally with me. It's a three-step process, friends. But we as Christians, and we as people seeking God, and we as people who may not be seeking God, really muddy the waters. Because it takes something from us as well. This isn't just God saying, I created you, I want to have a relationship with you, I want you to live eternally with me, without us having some part of the plan. If you turn with me today, in the passage of scripture we're going to be looking at, it's going to be in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Give you a little context on this. Jesus is sitting in an upper room for the Last Supper. And you're going to be going, hey, wait a minute, didn't we do this last week? Yeah, and I also told you that last week it takes seven times for us to hear it before it ever hits, right? Jesus is sitting in an upper room with his disciples. And he starts talking to them. And he says to them, now I want you to picture yourself as Jesus is your best friend. He's going to tell you in a matter of moments three things that are going to affect your life. A, I'm dying. I'm getting ready to die soon. Now if you're not all stunned in your growth of what he's going to say next by him saying that, the next thing he says is, one of you in this room is going to betray me. And if you're not stopped there, he's going to say to the person who is the mouthpiece, the spokesperson of the friend group, I'll never deny you. I'll never betray you. And he's like, look, man, I promised you something. I promised you that you're going to be the rock that this church gets built upon. And I'm going to come through with that promise. But let me let you in on something. You're going to deny that you have even known me, not once, not twice, but three times. Okay, let's take this scenario even closer to home. You've got a friend group of, of 13 people. A friend group of 13 people. And for some, that's stretching it, right? And you've got a friend group of 13 people. And that one person that is just key and instrumental is the glue, what I like to call the glue of the friendship. It's going to tell you, I've been told that I have a terminal illness. I'm going to die. And the rest of the group, the rest of you in that group, are sitting there going, oh no. But that's not the worst of it. The worst of it is, is that one of you are going to tell all the secrets that I've told you over the course of the last 20, 30 years, all of my things that are in my closet, you're going to tell them to everybody. And you're going to betray me. One of you. Now, are you sitting there going, am I the one? Is it me? Did I say something? And then one person in your friend group steps up and says, I would never do that. And, and that person in your friend group, your, your friend that has just said that they're going to die, has said, really? Because I think that you're going to deny that you even know me. Now, let's put it in that context. That's what Jesus did. And then he moves on to chapter 14, while all his guys, all of his buddies, are still trying to process all of this, right? Think about it. How would you feel if you were trying to process all of what he was talking about? And Jesus says in verse 14, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, 
Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Now, I don't know about you, but after I've been told that one of my best friends are going to die, after I've been told that somebody in our friend group is going to betray, and after I have been told that somebody in my friend group is going to deny, none of this makes sense. Are you, would you be with me on that? Because you're sitting there still trying to process. And Jesus says as comforting words to his disciples, after I've told you all these things, I'm going to comfort you in this way. Know that I'm going to prepare a place for you. Trust in me. I will guide you. I will not lead you astray. Now, let's get back to the strategic plan, God's strategic plan. What was God's strategic plan for each and every one of us in this room and who worshiping online or who may worship later on? What is God's strategic plan? What was the first thing? He created us. What is the second thing? He wanted to have a relationship with us. What is the third thing? He wants us to have eternal life. But he saw that the world was going haywire. Can we relate today? The world is going haywire. And, and he sent Jesus to take care of this. Now here's where we come into play. There's going to be six things that I'm going to talk about that we must participate in, in God's strategic plan. The first one is that we have to believe God. We have to believe in God. We have to believe that there is a God. Because the other five steps don't take place in the Christian world without that first step. We have to believe. And we can't just say that, well, I'm here, I believe. Because there are a lot of people that have attended churches for a long time that don't. So these are all personal questions for each and every one of our our own personal lives. First thing, do I believe in God? The second one, the second thing is to repent of our sins. See, believing in God, Satan did that. Satan's angels do that. It's the repentance part. It's the one part where we sit back and go, you know what? I'm a mess. And here's my mess. Forgive me. When we do the first two things, the other four things on our timeline, on our strategic plan, start to fall into place. The first one Jesus talks about in this passage of Scripture is trust. If I were to ask you the question today, who in your life do you trust right now, who could come up with a great answer? Some will say family. Some will say friends. And did Jesus say the same thing? And did he also say, 
I trust Peter. I trust Judas with the money. And so for many of us, we sit back and in our day and age in the world that we live in, we find it hard to trust anyone or anything. And so God says, Jesus in the flesh says, trust me. Trust me. And then to continue on with the timeline of what we must do, we have to have faith. Notice Jesus says in this passage the scripture, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. And then he adds this, which has always tripped me up because Jesus is the greatest human being to ever walk the planet. And then he says, he will do greater things than me. Why, what, why do you think he means by that? He's telling his disciples, I'm getting ready to leave, and I'm leaving this to you. So hopefully you've learned a few things along the way, because it's on you to continue to teach generation after generation after generation about me. You know, Jesus is saying these very words to everyone who has ears that can hear today. You will do greater things than me. And, you, and many of us sit back and go, that's impossible. That's impossible. But having trust in who God is and having faith in where Jesus is leading you only leads you to the fifth step. And that fifth step is live like Jesus. And again, we may even look at it and go, impossible. And he says, be like me. And you go, what does that look like? Please ask the question, what does that look like? It looks like loving other people. It looks like caring for other people. It looks like having compassion for other people. It looks like being grace-filled. It looks like giving mercy. And it looks like asking and receiving forgiveness. And we're supposed to do greater things than Jesus in this area? Yeah. And you know why? Because he said, I'm leaving. And I'm leaving this to you. And the last step in God's strategic plan and the part where we fit in is to pray. Jesus says to his disciples, in their most grieving moment, remember, friends, that he's been, already told them, I'm dying, one of you are going to deny me, one of you are going to betray me. He hasn't yet to tell them, and the rest of you are going to run. But he does say this. He says, pray. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Now, that's a tricky one right there. Many people will say, I want to win the Powerball in Jesus' name. I want to buy this new car in Jesus' name. I want to own this house in Jesus' name. And he didn't mean anything by putting the hashtag in Jesus' name at the end of it. And for those of you who are elderly, you may not... Hash what? For Browns? No. It's what these younger generation call the hashtag. For all of us, 50 and over, it's the number sign. Okay? Just to let you all know. You're welcome. And you say... In Jesus' name. What he's saying is, come to me. What was the second part of God's strategic plan? A relationship. And the only way to have a relationship is to pray uh, constantly to God. It's constantly, and, and many people will get tripped up in the these and the thous. Don't. It's all about having a conversation with your best friend. 
It's all about saying, this is what's going on in my life. Even though he knows, he wants you to know that he's there. So, our part is to believe in God, to repent of our sins, to trust in what God has in store for us, because many times we get, we get messed up with that, in the trust, in trusting in God, because we know the plan. We have the proper plan in our mind, how, how life should go for me. And God, just get on board for crying out loud, because I know better. And God sits there and goes, no, you don't. And then we have to have faith in whatever that plan may be for our lives. And then we have to live like Jesus in every detail of our lives. And you can say, well, how can I love like Jesus? I have not seen Jesus like these guys did. I have not touched Jesus like these guys got an opportunity to do. I did not get to listen to Jesus like these folks do. Yes, you do. Every one of us has the opportunity of seeing who Jesus is. And you know how that is? Through other people. Every one of us, again, were created by God. And you can ask yourselves, ask yourself, just this week, where did you see somebody showing God's love? And it doesn't have to be something large. Here, here's, here's three things that I, where I saw God's love this week, just, just in my own personal life. And I'm sure there's many more opportunities that I missed out on. One, two guys install a microwave in our, in our parsonage that went, I didn't know what I was doing. Thank God they did. But I saw the love and care that they gave to my family and I to provide us with a microwave. You know, and you're sitting there going, big deal. You could have heated it up on a stove like they used to do. Okay, so we could have. But they showed love in, in dropping everything that was on their schedule and coming over and fixing it. I saw God's love sitting down on the, on the back of a, of a deck with my father-in-law who broke his hip a couple weeks ago. And all we did was sit there and eat chips and salsa and never say a word. Food is key for me. It is a love language, that is for sure. And we never said a word. But it was just sitting there, and the only thing that he said is, man, this sun feels good. And the third thing, I got to sit at a ball game yesterday with my wife and just watch what I enjoy watching, whether they're good or bad. Cardinal baseball. And, and you may say, well, where does that rank on the love scale? Spending time. So if you're struggling in this area of loving others or seeing love in other people, pause for a moment just to take a look around. Jesus starts this whole conversation out with these guys with this verse. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Ask yourselves this question. Where is your heart troubled right now? Then he follows it up with this. Trust in me. Trust in my Father. And then he has this passage of Scripture. I'm going to my house to prepare many rooms, because there are many. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. What's the third part of the strategic plan? Salvation. Eternal life. You know, the high school kids, I was talking about them a while ago, a couple weeks ago. They, they always have some great sayings. And, and one of the kids said, you know, God's the best baseball player out there, Troy. You know that, right? I said, yeah. Okay, why? He said, he's batting a 1,000. In what? Promises. He keeps all of his promises. He's batting a 1,000. I said, we need to print shirts. And, and he said, 
There, God bats a thousand on his promise keeping. And if Jesus is telling these disciples, and if he's telling us today, in this passage of scripture, I go to prepare a room for you. And when it is your time to leave this earth, if you follow these steps, believe, repent, trust, have faith, live like Jesus, and pray, we'll see you in heaven, and you'll get to see your room. So as we get ready to, to go into a time of communion here in just a second, On the front rows of, if you're in person with us, the front rows, there's a piece of paper. If you're sitting behind the front row, in the seat in front of you is a piece of paper. I would love for you to pull those out because you have some homework to do, friends, and you're all like, I did not sign up for this. On that piece of paper. And if you're worshiping with us online, I'll be happy to get this to you. Or if you've written these six things down. I want you to take a look at this, where it says, my part. Believe, repent, trust, faith, live like Jesus, and pray. First question, where do you excel? Circle one of those. Where do I excel? I'll give you a few moments to think about it. Second, where do I need to work? What is something that I need to work on out of this list? Let me circle that. Actually, I, I circled believe as where I excel. And living like Jesus is where I have to work on. I'm just going to put it out there, being open and honest with y'all, because it's tough to live like Jesus. There are too many people in the way. I used to have a good friend of mine, he's a pastor friend, he said, you know, ministry would be great if it weren't for the people. <laughs> I used to laugh at him all the time when he said that. Where do you excel? Where do you need to work? And then put it in your Bible. And if you say, I don't have one, well, great. There's Bibles under the seats if you're in person with us. We've also put a uh, two um, desk, two-layer desk back there with Bibles. Please feel free to take one. If you're a, techn a technological, boy, that's a hard word, techno a technological person, and, and you have the Bible app, or if you have a Bible on your phone, then go to that and put this piece of paper with it this week. And then continue to look at this passage of scripture. 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. Because you were chosen at a time such as this. God chose you to be here to hear this message today. And as we get ready to go into communion, I'm thankful that he did. I'm thankful that he chose you, whether it's today, whether you're worshiping online, whether you're going to go home and watch this on demand, because as Al said, now it's out there to the world. My friends, we were chosen for a time such as this. We've got a part to play in God's strategic plan. May we go live into it. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for the words of Scripture today. I thank you for Peter's words. Peter, the guy who denied even knowing Jesus. Not once, not twice, three times. Yet Jesus still forgave him. God, I, I thank God, I thank you, Lord, for Philip and Thomas' questions in this passage of Scripture today. Where are you going where is the way? Because many times we ask that same question in our own lives. 
And Lord, we just ask that as you continue to reveal yourself to us, we understand the triune God of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Lord, may we continue to excel at the things we are excelling at. In belief. In repentance. In faith and in trust. May we excel in living like you and praying. And God, on the things that we circle that we need to work on, may we give that to you and say, Lord, guide me. May I put my trust in you. May I put my faith in you. May I put my hope in you and not others. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen. At this time we have Holy Communion. On that night that Jesus was with them, and right after he said these words to them that we talked about in John today. He had supper for the very last time with his friend group. He took bread, lifted it up to heaven, gave thanks and praise, broke it and said, take and eat, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A few moments later, he took the cup, lifting it to heaven. He gave thanks and praise and said, take and drink. For this is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant which will be shed for you and for all people so that all sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you for dying our death. We thank you for rising from the dead so that we may live into God's plan for our lives. It's a simple plan. And Lord, forgive us for muddying the waters on this sometimes. But thank you for going to the cross. Thank you for dying our death. And thank you for reestablishing that direct contact with God through an empty tomb. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. I ask our communion servers to please come forward. And as they do, you're called to come to, to Holy Communion. You do this, it's an open communion table, which means that if you're present and you're wanting that relationship with God, come. If you're online worshiping with us today, I ask that you get water or juice, a piece of bread or a cracker, knowing that this is God's grace for each and every one of us. And as we come today, may we see how we live into the plan that Jesus has for us. What, where do we get to participate? And what do we get to do? Where, do? where are our challenges in our life? And how may we bring them to God and trust in Him and Him alone? Today, the table is open and ready for each and every one of you who want to accept the grace of Jesus Christ. Come, the table's ready.
All right, for our last song, if you would please stand as you're able to join us, and we will just lift this up to Jesus at, in remembrance of what he did for us.
heads and pray for God's blessing. Gracious God, we thank you so much for this day, for hearing the words from both Peter and from John, two apostles that were close to you, Lord, that wrote these words down that you had said. Lord, may we put our trust in you in decision-making this week. May we put our faith in you that you will guide our steps. And may we cling to the plan that you have for our lives, that you created us, that you want to relate with us, and that you want to have eternal life with us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Have a great week, and I hope you join us next week when we talk about the Holy Spirit, all right? So hope you're back next week. There's a way that seems so